Hello, everyone. I'm Shidong from URUC. Today, I will present a reasoning about modern data center infrastructures using partial histories. This is a joint work between URUC and the VMware. Nowadays, modern data center infrastructures are increasingly architected as a cluster of loosely coupled services. I use Kubernetes, which is a popular cluster management system, as an example. Kubernetes uses ETCD, which is a strongly consistent data store to maintain the cluster state. And many Kubernetes services are layered on top of ETCD, like API servers and the controllers. API servers present the cluster state from ETCD to the controllers by forwarding the cluster state to the controller. And the controllers are used to manage different resources and applications like uh, Spark, Cassandra, RabbitMQ, MongoDB, and the Elasticsearch, and so on, that's running in the cluster. Different from ETC, the controllers and the API servers do not provide any strong consistent guarantees. And the correctness of the system heavily relies on the controllers as they manage those important applications. Similar architecture is also used by many other important and popular infrastructure systems like a Twan, Autopilot, Mesos, Borg, Omega, and so on. A key property of this architecture is that services often make decisions according to a local view of the cluster state. And the local view can be inconsistent due to asynchrony caching and failures in the cluster, which leads to a broad range of bugs. In this paper, we reason about such bugs using a concept called partial history that I will explain later. Let me show you one of the bugs we consider. Just focus on the controller and two API servers here. See at the beginning, there was an application that is RabbitMQ running in the cluster. The application was later stopped and restarted, which resulted in a new cluster state. API server one from ETCD learns about the most recent state, but due to some network issue, API server two still believes the application stopped. And from API server one, the controller learns that the application started. So the controller will accordingly create some containers to run this application. Later, the controller crashes and loses all the previous information. After restart, the controller connects to API server two, from which the controller learns that the application is stopped, which is of course incorrect. Then the controller will delete those containers used for running the application. Know that uh, the application is supposed to be running, so the controller absolutely should not delete the containers. The unexpected deletion causes severe consequences like uh, service unavailability and the data loss. This bug has been fixed by checking ETCD whether the application is still running before deleting the containers. But the triggering conditions are complex. It requires a controller crash and network issue happen at a particular timing which makes the bug difficult to detect during testing. We also observe a broad range of bugs, similar as this one, caused by inconsistent views with severe consequences like service unavailability, data loss, resource leak, and so on in many different systems. And we reason about such bugs using partial histories. As mentioned before, the controller has a different view of the cluster state than ETCD which makes it take actions conflicting to the cluster state. So we model the view using history, which refers to a sequence of evolving cluster states seen by ETCD. In this particular example, the history includes two states, app is stopped and app is started. And in the previous example, instead of seeing the complete history, the controller after restart only sees a partial history, which is a subsequence of the history and misses the most recent state. And according to the partial history, the controller makes wrong decisions and detail the containers. So we can say the difference between the history and the partial history leads to the bug. From this perspective, it seems that uh, we can avoid the failures by avoiding partial histories. However, I'm going to show you that uh, partial histories are unavoidable. I will also show you that uh, partial history leads to immense explanatory power and enable new testing tools. Let me start from why partial history are unavoidable. Still using Kubernetes as an example, and say at the beginning, the history includes a few previous states and the current state, state one. 
A controller typically send a query to the underlying data store, for example, etcd, to learn the most recent cluster state. Sometimes the controller needs to see the complete history to make the correct decision. However, by just reading the current state, the controller has no idea about any previous state in the history. So the previous states are missing in the container in the controller's local view. Besides, the controller often cache the cluster state locally to achieve better scalability and performance, as it doesn't have to always send a query to the data store. And when the history advances to a new state, the local cache state might not be immediately updated. So the controller often makes decisions without seeing the most updated state. As a result, the controller inevitably makes decisions according to a partial history. Developers need to correctly handle partial history to prevent failures. But it is difficult to anticipate all these conditions during development. As a result, bugs caused by partial history still occur with severe consequences. I will further show you that the partial history can lead to immense explanatory power that they can reason about a, brand, a broad range of bugs cleanly using three patterns, staleness, time traveling, and observability gaps. Besides, partial history can also explain bug funding heuristics of prior art. In this presentation, I will focus on the three patterns. The first is staleness. As mentioned before, when history advances to a new state, the locally cached state at the controller may not be updated immediately. So staleness is unavoidable due to the inherent asynchrony in the distribution system and it can be exacerbated by failures and caching and so on. As an example, in edge-based, reading stale data can break the atomic operations. The second part is time traveling, which happens when the controller has multiple sources to learn the history, like API Server 1 and API Server 2 here. From API Server 1, the controller can see the most recent state. But after restart, from API Server 2, the controller only sees the previous state. And in other words, the restart makes the controller go back in time. Time traveling can be used to explain a broad range of bugs in different controllers, causing service unavoidability and data loss. The last pattern is observability gaps. The controller can send a query to the underlying data store to, expli to explicitly read the current state. However, some intermediate state can still be missing in the controller's partial history as it only sparsely reads the cluster state. Observability gaps can explain a broad range of severe bugs in different services that can lead to job failures and resource leaks. Finally, partial histories enable new testing tools. We are currently building testing tools using partial history. The idea is to regulate partial histories to find bugs. By just interposing at the service API boundaries, we can perturb events to create staleness, time traveling, and observability gaps. There are also many challenges in building such a tool. For example, given the huge execution space, which events should be perturbed, and what workloads and test oracles to use. For example, to find time traveling bugs in this way, we inject a delay in API Server 2 to make it stale, and we inject a restart in the controller to make the switch between the two API servers and time travel from state two to state one. One of the most challenging questions here is how to choose state one and state two, given there could be thousands of states during execution. A potential solution is to analyze the controller's behavior to figure out which states can lead to conflicting actions. To conclude, I will present a new perspective to reason about banks using partial histories. Partial histories are unavoidable, and partial history lead to immense explanatory power that can uh, reason about bugs cleanly. Partial history also enable new testing tools. We have found three new bugs in this way, and there are still many challenges to solve. That's all for the presentation. Thanks for your attention.